Good morning, good afternoon, people, the Christian Boys Podcast. I hope you guys are doing absolutely Gucci. I am your co-host, Niles, and this is Nicholas right here, and we have some good old friends with us. Uh, this is uh, Larry Boy with Barb Manti, and then this is... Uh... No, this is Larry Boy, this is Larry, otherwise known as Lawrence. There we go. Welcome. Thank you guys for joining us. I hope you guys can come back anytime soon now. All right. All right. Let's start from the word prayer and then uh, let's get started. We got some cool, interesting topics for you guys. We got some good news going on. So let's do this. All right. Yo. Heavenly Father, please watch your in person and the sound of my voice, Lord. May you um, just watch over them, Lord. Guide, guard, and direct their hearts, Lord. Um, and just help them to speak for you, Lord, about your message. Lord, help people to be able to um, just may you allow them to have the freedom to speak um, to other people, Lord, and to not feel insecure or depression or anxiety, Lord, any of that stuff, Lord, and that they may not just, um, it's okay to be introverted, Lord, but it's also we're called to have fellowship and we're called to talk to one another and we're called to um, have community with one another, Lord, and I ask that and I encourage others to do so, Lord, and I thank you for all your blessings, Lord, and um, when two or more are gathered together, uh, you are with us, Lord, and I thank you for being in our presence today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, let's get to that good news, shall we? All right. So, going on with the good news, we have um, an affectionate dog. So, we have, um, if you guys don't know, I'm from over in California, and we have huge, huge wildfires going on. A couple of days ago, it was only 17% contained out of all the wildfires, um, and it was spreading like a wildfire. Um, but... In the midst of all that, there's an affectionate dog who is bringing so much joy to these firefighters um, who are battling the California fires, um, basically being a mascot, um, kind of like how we had before um, that one community last week um, during our podcast. But just basically bringing joy to everyone, you know, supporting them, being man's best friend, right? Um, going on top of that, we have a scientist who uncovered secret, a secret in centuries-old mud drawing a new way to save polluted rivers. So he's saving polluted rivers by using a century-old mud. Right? How crazy is that? Just when you think God can't be cool enough, right? Or God can't be any cooler, right? He uses mud to help save polluted rivers, right? Got to give God glory everywhere, you know? Um, and then I think uh, my boy Niles, he has something interesting going on. What do you yeah. have on? So pretty much, you know... All right, so there's this guy on YouTube um, who basically, well, he stumbled upon you to be learned different things about robotics. And he was really inspired by these, you know, different things of robotics and 3D printers and all. He decided to make affordable prosthetics for people, you know, who need legs and arms or maybe in a finger or so. And his name, I'm not going to pronounce his last name because I will butcher that. But his first name is Easton, and it's on the website of the good news network but he, um good news network but he seems like a pretty cool guy and you know it's amazing how we can be inspired by the things we come across on youtube or maybe a tv show but uh he's doing his mind he's putting his mind to use and he's helping those who really need it so props to him and props for those that well he's made you know affordable prosthetics because those can be costly things so good job easton good job all right round of applause for easton Woo! all right just me that's cool that's cool um I so weak that was so weak um going from that you guys right um <laughs> going from that, i think one of the most important things um and correct me if i'm wrong but uh communication i think is just so vital um even if we see in scripture right now right if we look at colossians 4 5 through 6 right um it says, be wise in the way you act toward outsiders, right? Make the most of every opportunity. Let your conversation be always full of grace um, and also seasoned with salt so that you may know how to answer everyone, right? And clearly this is talking about being a good example um, to the non-believers out there and how we converse with one another, being brothers and sisters in Christ. But also we have to understand, right, that when it comes to that, it's conversing with everybody, right? You have to be a good example of being an ambassador for Christ um, to everybody that we meet, right? I like to think back to uh, Niles and I, right? And, uh, you know, one of these days we'll share in our podcast how we met. But if we didn't make that communication, you know, if we decided that, um, hey, you know what? 
I'm not going to talk to this dude. And he's like, I'm not going to talk to this dude. Right. Where would it be? We wouldn't have this podcast, right? We wouldn't have you beautiful 22 subscribers. Actually, to you guys. 30, uh, 30 subscribers. Look at that. Y'all are beautiful, wonderful people. Um, but yeah, exactly. Right. We um, need to have communication with one another. Right. Even if we don't particularly like that person or um, they, we might find them even toxic. Right. Uh, communication is key. Right. Saying, hey, I can't talk to you right now. Right. Or, hey, you know what? Let's talk. You know, it's that communication that keeps the line open. Yeah. And I totally agree with that. And, you know, it's amazing how from a small conversation, whether it's mutual with someone, say, in the workplace, can potentially lead years down the road to a beautiful friendship, you know, because and I'm sure, you know, a lot of young adults out there, maybe, you know, middle age can relate how their childhood best friends, whatever, have maybe moved away or since just lost communication. It's funny how now this is from a believer's perspective, but it's it's great how God will place those in your life, whether they start the conversation or you, whether it's just with, hey, can you help me, you know, moving this stack of paper around or can you help me move the food cart all the way down in the next hall because it has no wheels. It's amazing how those potential conversations or those interactions can lead to potential relationships that's going to lead years in advance. You know, you just don't know. And I've, you know, had a great deal of experience with that at work, you know, and especially within the church as well. But from a, you know, you might be watching and you might not be, might not be a believer and all, but at the same time, I'm pretty sure a lot of those out there can relate to something like that. And school is a huge part of that, you know, sure, school is a time to, you know, not just learn, but branch out, be social, find if you're social or break that shyness and stuff. But today, what we're really going to kind of cover is, you know, why it's important to talk why it's a bad idea to keep things inside. And we understand both of us have been through this where, you know, we might want to keep these things in because, you know, we don't want to be laughed at. We don't want to be looked as weak or anything like that. And before we started shooting this, it's pretty much breaking the guy's standard of silence, you know? Breaking the stereotypes. Yep. Exactly. And as I'm sure you and I both know, that some people are just naturally quiet. And that's okay if you're naturally quiet. That's okay. But, you know, there's people out there who are maybe we're very sociable, or very talkative, but there's things that just, you know, they won't talk about or they're just quiet around a particular thing. But pretty much we hope to shed light on that, you know, it's OK to, you know, go to that one person, whether it's your parents or a friend or maybe even like a new found friend or coworker. Because, again, as cliche as it sounds, I don't know you that much. So that's why I'm going to, you know, spill out to you. But at the same time, it's even more important to talk to someone that you maybe have known for maybe two or three years. Or even four years. Exactly. There's, a, yeah, yeah, the correlation. Four years. Four years. What are you looking at there? But anyhow, are you okay? Are we good? Yeah, no, I was, I, I was thinking about how long we've known each other. It's, it's, it's been a good time. It's been a thousand days, over a thousand days. Can you believe that? Only a thousand days? Has it? We've known each other for more than two years. So, well, you said four, right? Yeah. So, 300 times whatever that would be, or plus. You get what? Yeah. All right. Give me a second. <laughs> We're going to do some mathematicians here. 1,460 days. That's a good time. That's a lot of days. Yes. Yes. So yes. you guys got those friendships that are in the thousand day range, not in the year range yet, but uh, comment below because hashtag 1000 French or hey, what do you want to say? Hashtag 1000 day friendship. There it is. That, that's a good, good one. But anyway, what I'm going to ask you here, Nico, is let's just kind of go on to why it's a bad idea to hold things inside, whether it's a simple thing that to us might seem like it's a mountain to talk to someone else about. Um, all right. I think from personal experience, um, just past relationships, right? Um, communication is key, right? Um, I don't know how many, I mean, I can count how many times, but um, there have been countless times when uh, my significant other, right, or my past significant other would tell me, hey, you know, it's like, I'm there for you, right? And you just need to communicate to me. Um, and But my trouble, my hardest thing is I, I'm a helper, right? And so I'm a leader, but I also love to help people, right? And that's what a leader does. And so if someone needs help or if someone needs a listening ear to, um, I'm, I'm there for you, right? And I'm going to help you as best as I can. But the moment that I need help, uh, I'm not going to ask anyone for help, all right? Um, it's not that it's wrong, right, to ask for help, but it's more so 
um, pride, right? And pride is a huge fault, right? Um, it's kind of like saying, hey, you know what? I like to help you, but if you start to help me, then I feel like I'm in debt to you, right? Um, not so much like, okay, you're less than me, right? But I just don't like to be put in a vulnerable position. But why is that, right? Um, we see so many people um, in the Bible who have been put in that position, right? We see missionaries who are put in that position, right? You ask for money. You ask um, Paul, right? Uh, Apostle Paul, he was a tent maker, right? And he would literally ask churches, hey, can you help fund me, right? You're put in a, a vulnerable position to help bless others, right? That's what it is, right? You're helping others um, to add riches to heaven, right? Um, but yeah, going from that, I think, but if you don't have communication, right, as simple as, hey, what restaurant do you want to go to? Oh, I don't care, right? Or, oh, hey, you know, um, is anything bothering you? No, it's fine, you know, but you've had a rough day, right? It's great to communicate that to your partner, and it's great to communicate that to God, right? Because God knows your heart, but he wants you to be in that vulnerable position, so that he can help you grow. Exactly. And, you know, it's in, in the Bible, it's so prevalent that God is, you know, not just a jealous God, but he wants to hear from us. You know, he wants to hear from his creation. And anyway, I try not to talk about it sometimes, but anyway, um, pretty much, you know, it's like I said, it's it's been shown so many times in the Bible that God wants us to speak to him. You know, whether and I think one of the I think one of these are the verses of the day. It was first Peter chapter five, verse seven. And that's pretty much casting all your anxiety on to him. And, yeah. And it's not just anxiety. It's not just worries. It's just, you know, maybe small concerns or things you just want to talk about praises and stuff, you know, like um, I'm so thankful for this day because, you know, I met so and so and this and that. And maybe that small interaction that I had with this person really bothered me and stuff. And coming that it's, it's easier to talk to God about those things and maybe someone else in the family or friend, because one of the things I think us and especially us guys worry about is coming off as someone who's annoying, you know, kind of thing, even though that person we're talking to really wants us to hear, you know, hear about our day or hear about what's bothering us. But of course we have that small voice in our head that's saying, no, 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 be careful what you say. You don't want to come off as this or this or that. And it's it's a really hard time to do that. But I think what we can learn from when we have discussions with God, when we have prayer with God, is we can take how we are honest with him. And sure, we're not always going to be as honest as maybe we should be with God or someone else. But how we, you know, we should look at our discussions with God and try to add that to a person, you know, kind of thing. Sure, they're not, person's not going to have all the answers or anything, but they're going to see us in a new light. And I think, what, you know, when God says, you know, talk to me be with me in another way he could be really saying that to you be with that with your you know your mom or your dad or your boyfriend or girlfriend or whatever you know. and it's, it's so important as you were saying you know to get that communication out because that's that's about that's the foundation of relationships you know it's not just significant other relationships it's friendships teacher and student or employee and employer you know where they have a small concern about how the job is done or you have a reason to have a concern about, you know, are me and this family member good, you know, kind of thing. Because just because you're in a family doesn't mean you're going to be close. And that's the same way it is with, you know, friendship circles sometimes. But yeah, so from that, it's, you know, I challenge you guys to look at how you guys communicate with God. Can you take that and can you have those conversations with people that you have in your life, you know? And uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but when you become vulnerable to someone, um, you open up that door to allow um, vulnerability uh, mm. to the next person, right? No one's going to come up and talk to someone who they think they are perfect, right? Um, I mean, except for Jesus, right? Um, but if Niles, right? So if I came over and I thought, you know, um, that Niles was perfect, right? And that everything was great with him, you know? Um, and he never opened up to me about his struggles, right? Then I would not feel comfortable opening up my struggles and my worries, and my depression, and my anxiety over to him, right? Because he, I feel like he wouldn't know what I'm going through, right? And vice versa, right? Um, what we think makes us weak is actually making us stronger in the eyes of the next person, right? Um, real men are afraid to cry. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that took a while for me to understand. Yeah. And and you know that that's okay. And you know I, I get I understand you know the the vulnerability 
thing, you know, because I think at the end of the day, we want to know that we're relatable, that everyone is pretty much in a sense going through the same thing. Now, you might hear that so many times, you know, whether, you know, you're like a teen on the age of 15 and 16, you might hear that on Facebook a lot where it's like, oh, so-and-so is going through this and, you know, just we're all going through the same thing. But are we really, though? I don't think so, because, you know, you have those people that um, will say that, but then they, people handle things differently. You know, let, let's go off with that, because, you know, for example, when it comes to testing in school, you know, you have those that are just absolutely worried about it. You know, I wasn't really one of those who was like petrified when um, finals came around or whatever. Then you have those that are like, ha, ha, you know, kind of thing. And we, we process things differently. Wow, you call me out there, huh? Cool. I didn't know. We've never had that. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's fine. It's all good. Call me out. My 30 subscribers. It's cool. <laughs> vulnerability y'all it's okay it's okay to be vulnerable comment below guys if you can either handle a test good or you're going to be petrified but remember study no matter which one you are hashtag study game you got to study you know uh, usually the people who stress out are the ones who don't study <laughs> <laughs> oh man i've been on both okay but anyway no but um, going going off of from it, and so I can get back on the train tracks. Basically, you know, it's amazing from what I've learned in the past years of every family that I've kind of interacted with. They all kind of have the same things going on, even though it's different. You know, you might have that one family situation that's like, you know, it's the same, but then it's different, of course, because it's a different family, but it's in the same category. And I think as you know. As you guys, you know, and, and again, I'm not saying go out there and open yourself up to, you know, your best friend or this or that, even that's a good thing to do. But really look at, you know, if you're going to have a conversation with someone, whether it's about, you know, like you were saying, the anxiety, the depression or different things of that nature or even something positive, really think, you know, have they gone through something like that? Like, have they op ever opened up to me about that particular thing? And could I bring that back into context by like saying, hey, you remember when you were talking about that and I was listening? Can we do that? But this time I'm going to be talking. You know, like, well, what would your take on that be? Though? Um, I don't know. I think um, I look back at, uh, I don't know. I think uh, when uh, I broke up with my ex, right? And I've been super open with y'all. So if you drop something in the comments, all right, I'm going I'm to be fragile. All right, I'm going to be honest y'all, all right? So... All right. Um, but when I broke up with my ex a couple months ago, I mean, it was like even a month ago and, uh, I was just down and, you know, I was, I was a little bit of a mess. And then you came over right, and you said, Hey, you know, if you need to talk to anyone, you know, let me know. And uh, I appreciated that, you know, cause I'm usually that guy. I'm usually that guy who's like, you know, okay, if you guys need someone to talk to you, let me know, you know, I'm here for you, you know, just say the word I got you, bro. You know? But to be in that position where it was like, hey, bro, you know, I was like, I just need to talk to someone, you know, and then we stayed up and we, we hung out and we talked, you know, and it was it was nice, you know, um, and it was basically just, you know, allowing the other person, right, or allowing someone else um, to help care for you, you know, and uh, that's not something normal to me, right? Uh, I have a servant's heart, and so I like to serve people, but when it gets to being served, I'm kind of like um, Peter. Right. Um, Peter on the Last Supper, when Jesus is like, hey, I'm going to wash your feet. And Peter says, no, you will never wash my feet. You know, and uh, Jesus says, you know, it's like, if I don't wash your feet, you will never be with me. You know, Peter says, well, instead, don't wash just my feet, but wash my whole body. You know, so going from that, you know, we have to let our guard down sometimes. Right. We have to open up ourselves. Um, because, yeah, if we just hold it all in. Right. Um, no one's meant for that. Right, no one's meant to carry the pain of the world on your shoulders. Yeah, definitely. And you know, for those of you that are watching that maybe have been in the situation to where, you know, you, you maybe and I and I've had friends before say this to me as to this is the reason for not being open about smaller big things, whether it be with their family, their mentors, or even me and or someone else, is because they don't want to feel like a burden. And at the at the at the end of the day. You know, you got to look at it. It's like, you know, what really defines a burden is maybe someone who, you know, constantly demands something or of the other person or maybe something. I may have been saying that wrong, but maybe there's not really such a thing as a burden 
in um, a relationship per se, because no matter if it's a friendship, like an actual friendship or work or vice versa, there's so many different forms of relationships out there, as I've come to find out. And a side note, if, when you research different things online, whether it's about relationships, most of the time it'll be about marriage or, you know, boyfriend, girlfriend things, which I think in society, it's it's kind of a sad thing, really, because I mean, yeah, there's resources out there. You know, this is kind of coming from a non political viewpoint. But there's resources out there that don't really help how to build those friendships, you know, like you and I, for example, or the teacher student thing or the um, worker and employee thing. You know, there's there's just not it's the word relationship in American culture is really just centered around, you know, marriage or, you know, boyfriend, girlfriend, which is kind of a sad stereotype, you know. But um, going back to uh, what you were saying about the. um well, the burden thing, you don't want to feel like a burden is, you know, yeah, those are those the people that are out there that, you know, <clears throat> want to help other people and stuff. They don't want to become, you know, they don't want to feel like they're a burden, even though they're not, you know. And so for those of you, that's where I'm going to go back to. For those of you that are watching where you feel like you would be a burden or just kind of a mess, or whatever, of opening up to, say, a friend or something like that, realize you're not because guarantee you, and maybe this is easier for someone to say it to you, is... um. The reason why you're not a burden is because to that person, that person that has talked to you, that has opened up to you about different things and stuff like that, pretty sure they would want you, you know, to come back to them and have a conversation like you did with them. You know, with, you know what I'm saying? Or yeah. person that opened up first would love it if you were to do that back to them. So then themselves are reassured that I can do that again. He's, he or she is sharing a little bit of information with me about something that might be bothering them at work or at school or whatever, you know, it's just, it's really good to realize that those of, that have come to you and have talked to you about these things are probably waiting for you or wanting to hear from you from another perspective, you know, so they realize that themselves are not a burden. But yet at the same time, if you um, go to someone where you've helped them before and you ask them, can I talk to you about something, you might quickly realize that's not their strong suit and they're really not going to be able to say a whole lot, but it's good to have an ear to where you can just, you know, give things to if you will yeah i think uh the last part we said you know, at least someone who has an ear you know uh, uh someone to lend an ear to you know i think that's a even if you don't have advice just uh, venting to someone you know exactly. I think it's super important yeah and you know, talk to Mary boy for so long you know so what what would you say Nothing. Okay, that's fine. I can play it back. <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> wow. But yeah, and, and for us believers, you know, I think this kind of brings me to another point. Is if you ever have questions where you want to question God, you know, and and it's okay to, you know, it's it's okay to be curious about our Father. It really is. Whether it's, you know, and I'm going to see if you can relate to this. You know, maybe when you were younger in your faith. And because, you know, you have different levels of faith. You have, you know, the baby faith, teenager faith, and then you have the, the grandfather faith. You know, you're pretty strong in your faith and stuff. And, if you, you know, if you ever come across a time to where you're wondering, you know, is it okay to question God? It's not like, you know, if you're going to be mad at him, he wants to know your emotion. You know, and he wants to know what you're feeling. You know, he knows what you're feeling. He can look at you. But it's better to just, you know, express that, to admit that to God. You know what I'm saying? And so it's okay to pursue to be open with God about, you know, you know, why is it bad, you know, for this person to be gay or why did you allow this to happen or this or that, you know, kind of thing. And like, does that make sense to what I'm saying to where it's okay to have that question, to have that wonder about these things that, you know, God has kind of placed? I think uh, out of respect, though, um, because I I did have questions like that, especially when it came to the story of Job. Um, but at the end of the day, if your answers aren't received, you know, or your answers not, not received, but if your answers aren't, um, answered the way that you want them to be answered, right. You need to be okay with that. Sure. You know? Um, God will answer every prayer, but that does not mean it'll be the answer that we want it to be. No. Right. So it could be no, yes, or not now, you know? Um, and so if you ask something like, why was, what was the story of Job? Like, why did that have to happen to him? You know, um, and I still struggle with that. Right. I, I don't understand why Job had to go through all that. But you have to understand that's not our thinking. Right. That's God's thinking. Right. And God has everything under control, you know, and he allows things to happen. The devil and his demons aren't allowed to move a muscle without the Lord's command. 
right? Remember that. So he allows things to happen. He allows people to go through certain things. And I'll be honest, we're never going to know everything, right? But that's why we have God in control, you know? Exactly. Um, so having that, it's okay to have questions, right? And questions leads to research, right? But if you have questions and you're not willing to do the research, like I see a lot of people on TikTok nowadays, um, where does it talk about uh, having a relationship with God? I don't know, right? Uh, what does it mean, you know, that God and this Jesus and the Holy Spirit are three in one? Oh, I don't know, you know, but if you have questions like that, start doing your research because I guarantee you a lot of the questions you have are going to be answered in the Bible, you know, and if not, then start asking questions to your pastor, right? That's why we have a pastor, you know, and uh, they have more knowledge and wisdom than we do usually. Yeah, definitely. And again, that brings us back to why communication is so important you know, really does. Because, you know, for the longest time, when I was younger, I always thought pastors had a higher relationship with God, you know, kind of thing. They were like, really on the top of everything and stuff. But then I quickly, you know, as I grew older, I realized that they're humans like us, you know, they're going to question things just as well, you know, kind of thing. And, you know, I guess what I'm going to say, going back to questions, so I don't like anyone confused or anything. I think there's a solid difference between, you know, being curious, questioning different things, and that's fine, into trying to falling into the pit of debunking, you know, what God has this or that. Because I can see someone, whether, you know, you're a new believer or maybe you're not, you're just on the line. Um, you have this line right here and you have the questioning, wondering, and I'm going to ask my pastor about this or I'm going to ask my good friends about this versus falling over here. And I'm just going to try to debunk everything God has laid out you know, kind of thing. There, there's a solid difference. I just wanted to say that real quick. But um, yeah, it definitely brings back to, you know, communication is good. That's fine. That's great. And but what the pastor thing is, is I realized that as the more you grow closer with God, you know, you look into his word more, you look into the devotions and stuff. And for those of you that might not know, devotions are a great little thing. Like they're just small tidbits of the Bible with a story that comes with them about someone else. And I encourage you guys to look into devotions and we'll talk a little bit more about that later on in you know, this series we're doing and all. But um, so where was I? But yeah, as you grow closer with God, as you grow closer in the Bible and with other Christian believers, you're going to hear God a little bit more and more and not like, so as you're hearing us, but you're going to see him a whole lot more in your life. He's going to be there, you know, closer. You're going to have a tougher and stronger, you know, faith in him and in him. Cause at the end of the day, God wants us to admit to others that, you know, I got this strong trust in him. I trust God to lead me, you know, through life, through my occupation, through school or whatever, you know, and yeah. Oh, uh, no, I keep going. Um, that reminded me of that one verse. Uh, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not in your own understanding and all your ways acknowledge him and he will make your path straight. And where is that found? Uh, I'm going to look at that line real quick. Uh, but, Proverbs 3, 5. What is it? Proverbs 3, 5. Yeah. And really, you know, it's it's such a prevalent thing to really not lean on. I mean, we can have understanding of a lot of things. We can you know, we understand how to do a car, fix a car, or, you know, computer, whatever. But when that comes to, you know, lean on your understanding, pretty much that's a life thing. You know, for those that maybe say that, well, my life is pretty good. I'm doing well and stuff. And I don't really need God anymore. And there, I've met people like I've seen that in my own family where, you know, they've had a good life. They kind of go away from a church family and maybe they've stopped praying along the way. <laughs> and before you know it, they're kind of right back where they started. And it's not because God is punishing them or anything. It's because God is just allowing them to live life without knowing God, you know, without forgetting him. And that's such a hard thing to see. And you guys might know someone that's like that, whether it's in your friends or family, whoever. The only thing at the end of the day to do for that person is pretty much just communicate with them. Let them know that, you know, God is still there and pray for them. You know, kind of thing, and just invite them to those fellowship outreach events, whether it's on Zoom or if you're lucky enough to be in person for it. Or copy and link this paste of this uh, podcast. Exactly. You know, because you know it, we're just a great escape from 2020. That's what we're really here for. You know, for us, it's just a great hobby. But if we're in your podcast collection, let us know. That'd be pretty cool to be part of a collection there. But anyway, do you have any other touches you want to drop on the communication? Why it's important. Mm. I think for all you fathers out there and you mothers out there, um, if you guys are watching this, uh, communicate with your child. All right. Um, 
I see so often that we, uh, we as um, a society, we disregard a child's opinions and thoughts. Um, and then we get upset when they're teenagers or they're adults and they don't regard what, how you feel, right? Um, and the reason why is because uh, we neglected them, right? We neglected that child. Um, hey, Niles. Hi there. Love you. Love you too. Right, kitty, kitty. Podcast. <laughs> yeah, we're doing the podcast right now. Nice. <laughs> Kitty's in here. Thirty people just saw that. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, it's all right. It's all right. Communication. <laughs> yes. Communication. True. Communication is very important. Isn't that right, Patty? Absolutely. You know what this means? What does it mean? This means. Look it up. <laughs> okay. Good idea. How do you look at finger motions? Comment in the no hint. It's Korean. Oh, Ooh, it's Korean. Wow, your eyes just perked up, brother. <laughs> anyway, let us know if you're an American watcher, a Korean watcher, or you're a mix or both. That'd be you know great to know the viewers to see the target audience we're going for. Oh. Um, no, I'm going to, I can't wait back to it. I just got a call, but this is what happens. This is why we do it not live anyway. But yeah, communication is very important. It is. It is. You got a call you got to take? You good? No, no, I'm not doing that during the podcast. I will not interrupt my 30, our 30 subscribers for that. No, we're, we're staying with them. Uh, must the, if it's important though, take it. No, it's not. That's fine. He can wait. He can wait. Okay. Um, if you guys are from, uh, my TikTok channel, Drop uh, hashtag FYP for you podcast in the comments um, and start spreading the word, you guys, on the TikTok about it. We also have an Instagram page just as well. It, you want to shout that out? It's uh, Christian underscore boys, B-O-I-S underscore. Exactly. Uh, you can definitely check it out. It's tons of fun. Um we just got it started up, so there's not much content. But when we upload videos, we will post it on there to let you know. And throughout the week, we you know might just get a, give a good old inspiration post, and we might drop some devotion links just as well, like with Pastor Rick Warren and some of the good boys out there just as well. Hmm. Oh, okay. So why don't you carry on with another conversation? I'm going to dress up real quick uh, for uh, that thumbnail. Okay. But first, I just want to continue about the uh, – actually, first – no, continue. Go, go, go. Do you, go. What you're going to do? But um, something I want to address on real quick is if you have any suggestions for um themes of the thumbnail you want to do. Because if you were watching the last podcast, the boy known as Nicholas over here decided to dress up in seven layers, two flannel shirts, and a big hoodie, and around eight beanies. Was it eight beanies? I think it was only four. But it was a lot of beanies. But shout out to the beanie wearers, as we discussed before. But I just want to yes. dress. Touch on something about the kids, talking to your kids. As you just saw right there as a good example, funny how God works, is, you know, Nicholas's mother came in and stuff like that. And that was just good communication right there. But to touch on a little bit more uh, personal, if you will, for those of you parents that are watching out there, or even the parents, even the sons and daughters that are watching this, you know, just really understand that. Think about this for a second. Your God chose, and I understand some of you might not have good relationships with your um, actual parents or grandparents, but whoever is apparently figure to you or someone who's a guardian to you, let's just say the word guardian to summarize. It's really important to just really look at them and realize that you're not taking these people to either give life to you or to more or less um, to take care of you, which is an amazing thing to realize. And through there, just pick a time to really just talk to them. You know, just listen to them, not just listen to their history, um, but listen to what they got to say. And, you know, decide for yourself if you want to apply that. Decide if you want to be like Nico and just, you know, start a podcast and that's okay and dress up. But on a more serious note, you know, for, uh -huh, for, the, uh, for the parents that are watching, really take a time to just take a time. Talk to your children. Just listen to what they have to have, and just have a good listening and talking hour and discussion. But um, as you can see, this is going to move to our new point about the Second Amendment and uh, DC Comics. Flash, take it away. This is a hold up. Get <laughs> your subscribes. If not, 
We will send you Christian memes daily. And non-existent bullets as well. What is that? Uh, it's just my little snack. Your little what? My snack. Oh, boy. Oh. Is it good? It's delicious. But, no, um, to end the... Uh, ooh, thank you. That felt good. But, um, tasted even better. You're eating characters? Nah, I'm sorry. Anyway, to, to end the uh, the topic of the day, pretty much, is to just realize communication is important. No matter if you're, you know, if you're a believer, that's great. Communicate to your fellow brothers and sisters in Christ. And especially just take the moment to know your pastors. Take the moments to know the leaders in the church. And for the parents out there and for the families that are watching this, you know, just really take time to open up. You know, I know it's, it's, it's easier said than done, but really just take it, you know, one word at a time, one sentence at a time. And before you know it, you'll probably become closer or you just know that person on a better on a better plane of existence. But anyhow, if you, you know, enjoy that, comment what you liked about it, comment what you can get from that. So right now we're going to go ahead and give a shout out to Elon Musk, one of the most predominant billionaires of this time who has SpaceX, that boring company, and Tesla under his control. As you can see right here, Nico is a, giving a perfect example of what futuristic space outfits are going to look like. Here you have the prototype known as Orange Baggy Bottom Eyes. And what you do is you put this on. It doesn't protect you in space yet. It doesn't protect you from COVID-19, so don't try it. But what it oh, there's a cat. But what it does protect you from <sighs> is the foolishness of people outside your home. If you have to go to the store wearing a mask with the helmet on, I'll say it again. It is the orange bottomized helmet. They're not for sale yet. I <sighs> I'm not sure if these will go into development or not, but the starting price of the concept models are 12, no, sorry, 1999 plus shipping and half ha shipping and handling. That's hard to breathe. As you can see, these are prototypes and if it's hard to breathe, we probably won't market these very long. But you will see, but you will see a full on review on our Instagram page on how they work, how they survive how they can help your life become a lot more livelier. Take it away, Nico. Tell us how you are feeling in that helmet. Uh, it's fogging up. If it's fogging up, realize you can take a wipe, go inside. I'm losing my two brain cells. <laughs> now that is something we do not offer on the Christian Boys podcast. If you are in lack of brain cells, we cannot sell those to you because we don't have the tools to extract them. We do have a guy that will be on later in the series, Professor Klutz, why we'll talk about why it's almost impossible to take brain cells and to sell them into, produ into production models. <sighs> Welcome back. Uh, yeah, I think. Um, yeah. yeah, exactly. Buy one now at your local cheese store. That's where you can buy them, but we will get our own. Meow. We will get our own limited edition production line as he is off the air for just a split second. We will look into advanced research levels. We will look into marketing, all this planning ideas on how to make the orange bottom eye. I have butchered the name three times now, so we probably won't make this at all. But <clears throat> look forward to our helmet. If you guys are looking for professionalism um, in your podcasts um, as examples, look no further. <laughs> Remember, at the bottom of our video description, we have a business email for business inquiries only and uh, pre requests just as well if you want to drop that. Yeah, if you guys want us at your next um, birthday or wedding, let us know in the comments below. We'll be over there. We work for Cheese Puffs. Amen. Good company, good calorie intake. Three ton cheese puffs, though. Yes. Yeah. Yep. 
So without further ado, let me ask you this. How is the smoke over there today? It wasn't too bad. Um, all right, you guys, I want you to ask a question. So I, I uh, someone painted this in the smoke-ish area. Um, I, I thought it was quite beautiful. Um, I can't tell you who. It could be in a first grader. It could have been me. Um, but drop in the comments if you guys think this is a first grader do this beautiful, wonderful, altruistic, super um, eloquent, exquisite painting. Or um, I did. Do a little close up of it. Isn't that beautiful, you guys? Like whoever made this is super talented. You guys can see the little bridge right there, and the the eloquent grass, and the sweat and tears because uh, I painted this in the smoke. So you painted it. There's no need for the comments section to ask. Someone painted this in the smoke. Uh, I'm not thinking correctly after the cheese puff incident. See, the brain cells just kind of went out of his nose onto the mirror to fog up. Don't eat it. Oh, sorry, but don't eat it. Yeah, don't eat paint, you guys. So it's kind of weird. It doesn't taste like color. You know, oh. it's a, oh. let me say this. Let me say this. I don't got the proof, but you can look it up yourselves. Scientists have discovered after studies that babies can actually see colors and taste colors. Um, obviously, they can't tell us that, but due to some... Because there's some adults out there that can actually see colors without drugs, can see colors like room, and they can hear colors too or taste colors. It's a weird condition. But from studying those people, they figured out that babies, when they're born, they're seeing all this stuff. And it's absolutely amazing. Yeah, but those are babies. Come on now. It's like yeah. saying dogs can talk, but we can't hear them. Because we're asleep. That's why. Yeah, exactly. They only talk when we're asleep and not unconscious. Like, what's the point, you know? Yeah. But that brings me to my other question. And this this is a very controversial topic. But can you hold up the water bottle you have in your room with me? Yeah. 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 So, shake that around for me. Now, just show the liquid to the camera. Do you think water is wet? Uh, No. You don't. So let me let me give this idea, and obviously this is kind of an old topic. But would you be would you agree with me that when water is in its natural state, like a lake, it's dry? How much sleep have you gotten today, buddy? <laughs> a lot. It was a good sleep. But think about it. Think about it. When there's a lake, right, and it's water, there's water in the lake. It's considered dry because it's its natural habitat. You fall into the lake, you'll become wet. The water on you is wet. So therefore, that's when it becomes wet. That's like the whole... Okay. Um, talking about weird topics. Um, I don't know how to answer that. I'm not a scientist. You're a scientist. Um, yeah. Going from that topic, um, we have a Bible study live uh, going on for our TikTok. Um and if you guys want to join, it's cool. It starts at 9 p.m. Pacific Central Time. Um, but going from that, we had an international student, an uh, international person, come from all the way from the Netherlands onto one of our Zoom calls. And um, basically, uh, she was talking to us, and she said something about hogleslog. And if you guys don't know what hogleslog is, it's chocolate sprinkles on a butter bagel or a bread. And um, it's, it looks really good. Uh, but my question was, can a hoggle slog, if you throw a, a wiener on it, can it be a taco? Because the definition of a taco is a fried pastry or a fried tortilla um, cooked by, uh, it's a Mexican food uh, where it's basically meat on a fried tortilla, right? And a tortilla is what? A tortilla is a flour substance. So technically, um, bread is a tortilla. And so if we fry that piece of bread and then we fold it, we can make hoggle slug. Okay. Or which okay. can also be a taco. So then, okay, I'm going to get coming. I'm going I'm to do a stretch. Everybody for stretch. Hashtag stretch conversation. When it comes to a hot dog, would you say bread is a pastry? Yeah, why? So are hot dogs tacos then? Yes. 
Okay. I literally just said that. Well, I I'm sorry. I didn't I didn't hear that you really. Oh my gosh, I'm an old man, guys. I'm an old okay, man. You guys put hashtag um, senile Niles. <sighs> oh man, that, that's what happens when you do a lot before a podcast, you know, and just your brain kind of goes from point A to point Z very very quickly. You agreed with me too. You totally just disregarded what I said. Communication, guys. This is why communication is important. It is. See. God has a sense of humor, and he just wanted to show an example as to why you shouldn't research Korean hand signs um, when, when you get told to see what that means. Uh, that cat. What's the cat's name? Shout out the cat. Arlo. Yeet. Good. And remember, guys, don't eat your cats. Don't eat your dogs. Just kind of shove them to the side nicely. Why did you say that to me? I'm not saying it to you. I'm saying it to the people that are watching. Mm, that was pretty oddly specific. Not <laughs> the cat. I'm going to let you know, Professor Klutz. I've had my cat for a good couple years now. I said yeet. Oh, I thought you said eat. I was like, oh, is that no. so? No. Yeet. I was going to say, wow, I don't know how y'all do it in South Dakota. All right, but in California, we keep our pets. We got mountain lions. It's a scary time. Something's eating your pets. Okay. With that being said, um, I think uh, you gotta get that phone call. So you close off with a prayer. Yeah. Let's let's go for a prayer. Then I'll end it with a message. Okay. Uh, dear Heavenly Father, please watch over each and every person on the sound of my voice, Lord. May the Holy Spirit fill inside of each and every one of us. Thank you for being such a wonderful and awesome God, Lord. Um, and continue to guide, guard, and direct our hearts. Um, may the words that come out of our mouth may never be from us, Lord, but be from you. And thank you, Lord, for letting us use this platform to bring you glory. Um, thank you, Lord, for all your blessings. May you bind Satan and his demons. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and the anxieties or worries that we may have, we may throw them at the feet of you, Lord, um, at the foot of the cross. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Anyway, guys, hope you enjoyed that. This is, in fact, I'm assuming our shortest podcast we've done, which is good if you have a short attention span, because some people only watch for 20, 20 minutes and walk away, but you got to love them anyway. All right, guys, if you have any questions, comments, leave it in the comments, obviously. But if you want to reach to us on our platform, we'll probably open up the Instagram chat when that gets uh, going more. And remember, we have that email for um, prayer requests. If you want to drop any of that, we're more than welcome to pray. All right. Y'all have a good day, good morning, good evening. If you guys have any questions about salvation, um, just drop them in the comments or check our latest two videos ago, and we talk about salvation on there. Um, it's a great step, and you guys should all do it if you haven't already. All right. Uh, anything to say in front of the hamster? Stay blessed and stay Gucci. All right. You heard from the man himself, you guys. Good night, Vietnam. All right. You guys have a great night. God bless y'all.